Joshua chapter 19. And the second lot came forth to Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families, and their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. Now Judah is going to swallow up a lot of these, these uh, brothers of his in the vast land. And one of the reasons I believe is because two and a half tribes didn't go over. And that the vast land that is empty was supposed to be the full 12 tribes of the children of Israel and it don't turn out to be. Because watch what happens. And they had in their inheritance Beersheba. Now let's look at 1 Kings 19.3. Amazing how God does something with our family. How he just backs up what we've already done. 1 Kings 19.3. And the Bible says, 1 Kings 19, 3, when he saw that, he rose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah. Now we come back over here, it says Beersheba is Simeon. And that's not a contradiction because Simeon becomes part of Judea. And Later on, when the nations are separated into two, there's Israel north and there's Judea south. And so the vast land. Now, Beersheba, we, you can find on any Bible map. Beersheba, beer, means water, well. Sheba means a, uh, a covenant, a, a pact. And this is where Abraham made a pact. I forget which, uh, how to say it was, but you can go back in Genesis. That would be um, Genesis 21, 31. So we're seeing the places where the fathers are, or been. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And by Beersheba, we know where, like I said, you can find it on any map. And Sheba, and Molada, and Hazor Shurim, and Bala, and Zanim, and Etolad, and Bethuel, and Orma. And Ziglag. All right, here's another interesting one. First Samuel 27 6. First Samuel 27 6. First Samuel 27 6. Now we're going to place again Simeon, which already did Bathsheba. But first Samuel 27 verse 6. We're going to see this is going to be future of David. They position ourselves. First thing in 27, 6. And Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore, Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. In that time, David dwelt. David runs from Saul and goes over the Philistine area and becomes part of them. And the king. Of the area gives him this place called Ziglag. Ziglag was already part of the children of Simeon. Chapter 19 of Joshua, verse 5. And then chapter 30, Samuel, 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. Thirty verse one. We can't read the whole chapter, but and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And then we come to chapter thirty again, same chapter. He goes over verse eighteen. And, he recovered, and, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Not only is Ziglag given to David by the Philistines, which is Simeon's, 
by Joshua and the elders of Israel. But the, the, the Philistines given, I don't know if I said Palestine, the Philistines have been given to David, the king gave it to David, it is David's, and David ends up going over there and fighting a battle to regain the land. So, Beersheba, you can find any maps, they glad you can find, it's over where the Philistines are. We're over by the Mediterranean Sea now, and Beth, Bar Boca, both, Baruch, and Hazer Shua, and Beth Leboth, Sharon, 13 cities and their villages. And Nehemiah 11.25. Nehemiah 11.25. In Nehemiah 11.25 And for the villages with their fields, some of the children of Israel dwelt at Kirch of Arba, and in the villages thereof, and in Dibon, and in the villages of, and Jezebel, in the villages thereof. It's called Judah. This area, even though it's Simeon, it, Simeon has been swallowed up by Judah, their brother. In chapter 19, verse 7, Rimma and Ether and Ashurin, four cities in their villages. And all the villages that were round about three city, these cities in Beloth Beer. Beer again, it's a well. It's water. Rama in the south. And again, you got to have a civilization by water. You need water to survive. And that's what beer means, the water. And it's kind of funny because when you mention American beer, it means an intoxic intoxicating liquor. But do you know how much water it is needed to make beer? Do an internet search. How much water does it make uh, for a can or for a glass of beer? And you'll be quite surprised. You know, when people say, oh, this nation needs clean water, or these people need clean water. Why don't you take all the water you take for beer? Because it takes a lot. Ramoth of the south, this is an inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. So that area was Judah's. But Simeon come in and taking and helping taking part. And then Judah just swall this swallows them up. The inheritance of the children of Simeon for the part of the children of Judah was too much for them. Now that's interesting. It says Judah's land was too much. Well, you got two and a half tribes are gonna go that are settled on the other side of the river. Therefore, the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. So when you say, well, Beersheba's of Judah, there it is right there. It's not a contradiction. Inside Judah was Simeon. We have states. We have 50 states. Within those 50 states, we are one country. But within those 50 states, we each state has counties. And within those counties, we have cities and towns and villages. It's the same thing. We live in Florida. That's the state of the United States of America. And in Florida, we live in Volusia County. Volusia County is in Florida. Simeon is an area. It's in Judah. In verse 10, the third lot came up for the children of Zebulun according to their families. And the border of their inheritance was unto Sarah. Now let me say, please pay attention to verse 10 and 16 because we're going to come back kind of to it in a moment when we go to Naphtali. 
But please pay attention to Zebulun for a reason. Uh, what was the verse 16? And their border went up toward the sea, Mediterranean, and Marla, and reached to Dabashith, and reached to the river that is before Jachnim. Neil, Neil, Neil. Again, I apologize. I, I'm not saying the names right. And turn from Syria eastward toward the sun rising onto the border of Cheshuloth Tabor. And then goeth out to Dabareth and goeth up to Jath, Jathoth. You say, what's so important about this? You want me to pay attention. And from thence passes on along on the east to Gabbath Heifer, to Itha Kazan, and goeth out to Remeth Methor to Neath, not Neath. And the border compassed it on the north side to Hananath. And the outgoings thereof are in the valley of Jethiel. El, that's Jehovah. And Catherine and Nahal and Shimra and Idala and Bethlehem. Twelve cities in Bethlehem. Now that is not the Bethlehem you're thinking of. And we'll see Genesis 48, 7. We'll look at two places here. Genesis 48, 7. That's not the Bethlehem you are thinking of, of Ruth and David. We'll show you in a minute. There are two Bethlehems. And so when we get a prophecy about Jesus Christ, we got to look and say, oh, there are two Bethlehems. And it says in Genesis 48, 7, And as for me, when I came from Pattern, Rachel died by me in the land of Cana, in the way when yet there are, uh, there was but a little way to come to Ephrah. Ephrah. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrah. The same is Bethlehem. Okay, that doesn't do anything for me. What do you? 1 Samuel 17, 12. 1 Samuel 17, 12. Now Jesus and King David are born in Bethlehem. But we have two Bethlehems. And it's important because I told you pay attention to Zebulun because we're going to get back to Zebulun. When we do Nathatali, but I don't want to reference this Bethlehem. And it says in 1 Samuel 17, 12. Now David was the son of an Ephraite of Bethlehem, Judah. You see that? This Bethlehem of David and Jesus is located in Judah. And that's the most important. When you see the prophecy of Jesus about being Bethlehem, it mentions this classification. It is not the Bethlehem that we read in Joshua 19. We've already read about the Bethlehem. That's of Benjamin in Judah. So Joshua 19, 16. Yeah, there's just two Bethlehems. That's not the one where Jesus is born, or David. It has nothing to do with David. And this is inheritance of the children of Zebulun, according to their families, these cities with their villages. Now remember, this is up by the Mediterranean Sea area. And the fourth flock came out to Issachar. And the children of Issachar, according to their family, and their border was toward Jezeel. What's that? Let's go to 1 Kings 21. Again, for our family. 
And what's what what's first king twenty one? This is an important thing, first Kings twenty one. Now it said here, while well, you turn there, and their border was toward Jezreel. Joshua, Caleb, in Joshua, the book of Joshua, they settle the land. They go by lots. This land belongs to this tribe. Because we're going to read something that takes you back to Joshua and chapter 19 that we are now studying. But 1 Kings 21.1, and it came to pass after these things, how God is so great with this family. We just read this. That Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel. Well, that's where we're on Je Joshua 19. We are in Issachar. Now watch. We're going to learn exactly where we are now. Had by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Jezreel is right next to where Ahab is. The Ahab looks out his window. He says, I like that vineyard. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs. That's it. Because it is near to my house. So what? Who cares? What's that have to do with that? Spoiled little brat. If it's not yours, and there's a reason that this is in here, because it is near to my house. And I will give thee the worth of it in money. I'll pay you exactly what it's worth. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers. Write that down. Underline that. Or whatever, however you mark your Bible. What is that inheritance of my fathers? All right, let's go check the fathers. There we go. Joshua 19. Verse 18, and the border was toward Jezreel. The fathers was Joshua, the priest, Caleb, and the heads of the people of Israel when they gave that land. And later on, you read about a man named Naboth. And here it is, Jezreel. Here's that land. He is not allowed. The Bible forbids in the law for you to give up your father's land. And they can trace that land to Joshua 19, verse 18. Now, we're not told what family is given Jezreel. Uh, later on, a part of the land we read about in uh, 1 Kings 21, 1. But now, we're given a location. We're up north. We're in Israel north with Hezekiah. And Kashum and Shumna and Habron and Shihan and Anahath and Rebeth and Kishon and Abus and Rebeth and Ingenian and and Hadad and Beth has Pazeth. That's house of Pazeth, Beth, house. I mean, if you're in a Scrabble game, you need you got any extra Z's, there they are right there. And the coast reaches to Tarbur. And Shabmanzion and Beth Shemesh. And the outgoings of their border was at Jordan. That's the river. 16 cities with their villages. So it goes right to the Jordan. This is an inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their family, cities, and their villages. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their family. And their border was Hekoth. Hai and Beaton, Nashvis and Emelech, Amid and Mishiel, and reached to Carmel, that's Mount Carmel, westward, and to Shine and Tor and turneth towards the sun rising, Beth Dagon, Dagon, the house of Dagon, reaches to Zebulun, to the valley of Jethaniel. Toward the north. We already saw the Jeff and Neil. So here's verse 14. So here's a city that's mentioned in one tribe and another tribe because a line goes right through that city. 
and reaches to Zebulun to the valley of Jethneel toward the north side of Beth Emek and Yeo, and goeth out to Kabul, Kabul on the left hand, and Hebron, and Neha, and Hamel, and Kaya, even unto the great Zidon. And, and then the coast turneth to Rima, and to the strong city Tyre, and the coast turneth to Hasha, and the outgoings thereof are at the sea from the coast of Exib. Numa also in Aphek and Rehob, 22 cities with their villages. The inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. I take a little breather. I'll wet my. A lot of names. Okay. The sixth lot came out of the children of Naphtali. Even the children of Naphtali, according to their family. Now, before we go into these long names, let's take a little break here. Let's go to Matthew 4.15. And now this one's interesting. Again, we're going to see, and it's not named Pacific. But we're going to see something about Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. And I told you, watch out for Zebulun and Naphtali. But we're not told specifically. Matthew 4, 15. And we'll start in verse 14. Uh, 13. This is Jesus. And leaving Nazareth, where he lived as he grew up, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, you find that on the map, which is upon the sea coast, Mediterranean, in the borders of Zebulun and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of the Zebulun and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea, Mediterranean, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people sat in darkness, sat in great light, saw great light. And to them which sat in the region in the shadow of death, light is sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach, to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Again, uh, where is that? Matthew 60 and Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. Isaiah. This is where the prophecy is. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. See, just reading where the prophecy is. Jesus leaves Nazareth. He leaves the area of Galilee and heads to the Mediterranean Sea. And begins his ministry. It said at that point is where he began to preach the kingdom of God. Isaiah 9 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun. We already read about the land of Zebulun. And the land of Nephthali. And afterward did more vigorously afflict her by the way of the sea. Mediterranean, beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness had great light. And they that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them had the light shine. There was darkness where we are now, and yet Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ left, left, I'm going to say nafti, left Nazareth, and now verse 32, and verses uh, 10 through 16 where we've already read Jesus is in this area so when we read their coast was from Hephala and Adla and Zimna and Adonai and Necha and Jabneel unto Grecum 
the outgoings thereof were at Jordan. And then the coast turned from Azath Tabor and goeth out towards thence to Hek and reaches to Zebulon on the south side, reaches to Asher on the west side, and to Judah upon Jordan toward the sun rising. That's where Jesus was. And that's where he began his ministry of preaching. There was darkness there, and Jesus became the light. And the fenced cities are Zidom, Zer, and Hamath, and Rekha, and Chinnereth. Chinnereth is the, another name for the Sea of Galilee. And Adam, and Rama, and Hazar, and Kedish, and Edurai. That's another famous writing of the Bible, Edurai. And Hazor, and Iron, and Megio, and Horam, and Beth Anath, and Beth Shemesh, 19 cities with their villages. So we see a place where Jesus was. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Nephthah, according to their families, the cities, and their villages. And the seventh law came out for the tribe for the children of Dan. Now if you ever have a music backdrop in life, you mentioned Dan. Dum, 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 dum. Because there's something about this tribe. And the coast of their inheritance was Zora and Estela and Irshimash, Shadabin and Ajon and Jatha and Ekron and Simata and Ekron. Now there's an Ekron down in the Philistines. It's not two different places. And Ekla and Gibbeth and Balath, Balath, and Jehud and Beth, Ben Birik and Gath Rimen, and Me Jarkin and Rakan and the border of Jepho. And the coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. This one's too little. Judah was too much. Too little for them. Therefore, the children of Dan went up to fight against Lechem, and took it and smote it with the edge of the sword and possessed it and dwelt therein and called Lechem Dan. Dan. We're going to read about this Lord willing when we get in the book of Judges. And what we see right here in the book of Judges, you will have the outgoings of the Catholic Church where we are right now. And we'll study that when we get to Judges. There's a man that hires a priest to be his priest that he calls father and gives him, you know, money and gives him a suit of apparel, gives him an image and gives him royal uh, outfits to wear for church service. And Dan comes and steals the religion and founds this city called Dan. This is inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families, these cities with their villages. When they had made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by the coasts, the children of Israel gave inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, Nun above, among them. Joshua was the last one to get the land, any possession. Or this is a note left after. All right, now we're all done. Now let's mention Joshua. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked. So God says, okay, ask Joshua. Joshua, yes, sir. What do you want? Even Timnath Sirah, Sirah, in the Mount Ephraim, because he's of Ephraim. And he built the city and dwelt there. So he goes in this land and he builds a city and he builds in this mountain. And it's certified in Joshua 24, 30 and Judges 2, 9. This is his land. As much as Caleb was given a land, so was Joshua. Now, there's only three groups of people in the book of Joshua that are given Pacific land. It's Caleb, it's Joshua, and those five daughters, Nola and Hogla and, and Milka, and I forget the rest of them, get a dwelling. Everybody else is by the children of Israel. And these are the inheritance which Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun 
in the heads of the fathers of the tribe of the children of Israel. Now let's go back over to 1 Kings and see what Naboth said. Get that in a minute. 1 Kings 21, verse 3. Because not only is it mentioned by city in this chapter we're doing Joshua, but the chapter closes off with what Naboth said. So Naboth is not just your round of an art kind of Jew. He knows the scriptures. Because watch, verse 3 of 1 Kings 21. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And when we close this chapter of the lands, it says these are the inheritance of the Eliezer and the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, the head of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. This what we've been li living and learning about is all these cities and towns and villages and places have been given to the fathers of the children of Israel. And has set into the book what is who and where is why. And one king steps in and says, I want it. In order for Naboth to do what the king wants, he would have to violate verse 51. These are the inheritance which Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel divided for inheritance by Lot in Shiloh. Naboth says, I can't, I can't go against that. That was set by Joshua. I don't know if he, there was no chapter numbers. But this land was given to me by Eliezer, by Joshua, and by all the heads of the children of Israel. I can't give it to you, sir. There is something more important than you, king. Because watch. By Lot and Shiloh before the Lord. Not only is this land my father's land, not only is my father's father's land, my father's 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 land, not only is this land given to my family, my tribe, by those that settled us in this promised land, but before God Almighty. So Jezebel, with all her, her false gods and all her false prophets, I don't care about capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. I care about small G-O-D-S, and I'm going to do it my way. And she becomes Alpo, and then becomes dog food. Neighbors, when you read that story, is 100% correct what he says. And he's killed for the word of God, if you want to take it that literal. Because they make a lie about it. He didn't say anything about God in the case. Wait a minute. What Jezebel said about God, the only thing he said about God is, I can't give you that land. Even if you are the king. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, that's Shiloh again. We talked about that the other night. That is where the ark is. It's where the ark is in David's time. So they made an end of dividing the country. So there it is. We have an atlas. We have a official document in the book of Joshua saying this belongs to Israel. And this is going to come up again when Jesus Christ comes into Israel. He's going to use the book of Joshua. And Ezekiel will lay out the land again. Who gets what and where what goes. It's in the Bible. It's in black and white. I am more sure of this as much as sure I know that Jesus is coming for me one day. If he, if he tarries, I am sure of this what I'm reading, that if I die, I will be absent from this body and present with the Lord, that in Israel, when Jesus sits as king on David's throne, according to Joshua, and later on, Lord willing, Ezekiel again, that land has already been mapped out, has already been laid out, and the lines have already been drawn, and I don't care what the United Nations say. I don't care what Jordan says. I don't care what England says. If they go against the Bible, they are wrong. 
And I guarantee the, the nation of Israel right now is not laid out in what the Bible says. So do you want to go to the Holy Land? Absolutely not. It's a worldly land over there. They're filled with unsaved Jews, unsaved Catholics, unsaved Arabians. I've been told even the Arabians will, will take Christians around on their buses. I'll wait till Jesus takes me to the promised land. 